Hello and welcome to the screencast on classes in the Scala for the Impatient series. In the first part, we're talking about the five key differences between classes in Scala and those in Java or C++. Let's first focus on method and fields. In Scala, methods and fields are public by default. That's pretty convenient, so you don't have to write the keyword public uh, because that, in fact, is a common default, certainly for methods. Fields are very different in Scala than they are in Java or C++. When you make a definition for a field, such as the one that we're making here, you shouldn't think of it as so much of a definition of a field, but really as a definition of a getter and setter method, at least in this case because the field is a var. If it was a val, you would just get a getter. So here we get this, uh, both a getter and a setter, and you can see it in action when the programmer assigns a value to this field, what actually happens internally is that a method is called. The method is called id underscore equal, the name of the field followed by underscore equal. By default, that method will simply move the value in the parameter into the field, but you can change the definition of that method to do other things such as error checking. Now, the third difference is that you can define methods in Scala that don't take uh, parentheses. So over here, let's look at this method here, the first name method. Notice that there are no parentheses here. And that means when you call that method, such as in the call over here, you also supply no parentheses in the call. Um, the advantage of this is that for the caller of the method, the user of your class, um, they don't really see any difference between accessing a value or accessing a computed value. So over here, the first name is not stored in a field. It is computed on demand. But this is totally transparent to the user of your class. And you can, in fact, change your design and go back and forth between implementing uh, something as a value or as a computed value. Now let's move on to constructors. Probably the most visible difference between Scala and uh, Java classes um, is the way that the primary constructor appears uh, in the class definition. The primary constructor is the most important constructor of a class. And in Scala, it appears um, somewhat intermingled uh, with the rest of the class. So let's look at this example here. We have a class person. Starts out harmlessly enough. And further down here, you would find the definitions of the methods of the class, just as you would expect. But now look here. You see this opening parenthesis and a closing parenthesis here. So what you see in between is the parameter list of the primary constructor. The primary constructor takes two parameters, an ID and a name. But there's more to it than that. What you also see is that the first parameter is actually also a field of the class. And so it's the second one. That's what's indicated by these vowels. So what goes on here is that we're defining fields. We're defining a constructor that sets those fields. That's the kind of boilerplate code that uh, you've probably written many times in Java or in C++. And Scala generates it for you automatically. It makes for a very compact notation, but also one that takes some getting used to, to, to read it. So when you read a class definition, um, you want to uh, home in on that primary constructor, look for those parentheses, and everything in, in between here may be field definitions, and uh, they are certainly parameters of the primary constructor. Also, as you go further down in the class, you need to disentangle what are definitions of, of fields or methods and what also are primary constructor actions. Look at this line over here. Here, this defines a field, a read-only field. Um, on the right-hand side, though, you find something that is a part of the primary constructor. The primary constructor has a name parameter. And as the primary constructor runs, it's going to extract the substring here and uh, assign that to the first name field. So as you scan a class in Scala, you want to look through all of the various lines of code and see which of them are actually part of the primary constructor. In Scala, just as in Java or C++, you can have more than one constructor. Um, the other constructors, the primary constructor doesn't have any particular name here, as you've seen. It's just inside the class. The other constructors are always named this. That's actually kind of convenient. If you change the name of the class, you don't have to bother renaming the constructors as you would in Java or C++. So here's an example of such a constructor. Um, this constructor just takes the ID, and then it defaults the name uh, to something. Notice that this constructor calls 
another constructor, in this particular case the primary constructor. The rule is that these auxiliary constructors, as they are called, always must call another constructor, which could be another auxiliary constructor or a primary constructor. And the effect of all of that is that in the end, a primary constructor will be called by every other constructor, and that primary constructor is where you put the code that's really in charge for doing all of your initializations. All right, so those are the five key differences between uh, classes in uh, Scala and in other uh, languages such as Java or C++. Uh, in the next part of the screencast, we're going to be looking at some sample code. And in the third part, we're going to be looking at some design hints.